Hey, we're ready to discuss the heart in this lesson. I guess we'll call it a lesson. And I want to bring out a nice little picture of a heart being held by somebody with a gloved hand there. It's, if I recall, it's a heart from a large dog, although most of us could line up a lot of hearts and not exactly identify which animals they came from, you know, but uh, that's the general structure there, the outside. Um, so there's always like a pointed area down here. Maybe I should call that the apex, A-P-E-X, the apex of the heart. You can see there's really no vessels, major blood vessels that are attached to any of this free surface of the heart. It's probably one thing you should realize. Um, all the plumbing is on the top of the heart, or we'll talk about the cranial aspect of the heart here in a little bit. Well, anyway, I want to talk about some terms. So, and you know, we're going to do the structure of the heart. And we're going to use our naked eye because we're just using our naked eye and looking at this picture. And so whenever you use your naked eye and you're doing anatomy, we could call that morphology. And actually morphology means the study of structure. So maybe I could put that up over here. So that's a general term, the study of structure, of the structure. Now, if we're using our naked eye, then you could say we're going to do gross anatomy of the heart. Okay, gross anatomy. Gross doesn't mean it's not yucky or it is yucky, whatever. Gross means you're not using the aid of any microscope. So another term for gross anatomy is macroscopic. Macro usually means large, and scopic is seeing. So we are using our eyes to study anatomy. You could contrast that if you were going to use a light microscope, then we'd have to say we're going to do histology. Histology is a term you should know means the study of tissue, because anything that ends in L-O-G-Y, you can start defining it by saying the study of, and then you look in the front in hist, histo, means tissue. So here's another term that's testable, the study of tissue. Histology can also be called microscopic anatomy. Micro means small. Now before we actually look at some hearts and talk about structure, external and internal, and naming parts and plumbing, I wanted to show you an animal in dorsal recumbency. You can see this dog is getting prepped for surgery. The attendant here, surgeon or surgical nurse, whatever, is probably scrubbing this area and we're going to talk about that, but that's the ventral aspect of the animal. Ventral means the belly side. We'll talk about that. And then obviously there's some gas inhalation going on inhalation of an anesthetic agent, then that renders the animal unconscious and surgery can be performed. Well, that's dorsal recumbency. The animal is in dorsal recumbency. Dorsal means the back region, the back bone region of the animal. Okay, and so you should know that animals are often operated by this way, and the reason I'm one of the reasons I'm pointing this out is because then I'm going to show you another diagram, but be aware that this is the left side of the animal, okay? And this other side is the right side of the animal. So let me show that a little better. And I guess I'll just leave that right there with dorsal recumbency. And I want to bring this one out, diagram. It's a little blurry when it gets enlarged, but It'll do a trick here. This is this animal on the right is in the same orientation as the animal in the left picture. So this animal here is in dorsal recumbency. We're going to define these terms later. Dorsal means the backbone of the animal. 
But I want to make sure that you know then when an animal is in dorsal recumbency and we're doing like a bird's eye view of the animal, this is the left side of the animal. Notice it's on the right side of the picture. This is the right side of the picture, but it's the left side of the animal. And there's a big reason I'm doing that. And there's cranial, there's caudal. We'll get to those in just a little bit. I have a better diagram here. So this is the right side of the animal. Well, why am I telling you this? Because usually in textbooks, when you look at a heart, the heart will be drawn. And I'll make it, you know, the heart's up in this region. We'll talk about that. But the right side of the page shows the left side of the heart. It's a little hard for beginners to understand why they do it that way. But I think it's because a lot of times when animals are dissected or surgery, they're in dorsal recumbency. So you're looking down at the heart. And this is the left side of the heart, but it's the right side of the picture. Now we're going to do some more terms and show you where in the body the heart's located. But before I do that, I want a few labels here. On this front end, that's cranial, caudal, let me get these things out here, dorsal, ventral. Okay. So when I look up here along the backbone, that's where my little laser pointer is, near the backbone you could say dorsal. Towards the tail of the animal, that's caudal, cranial, ventral, near the belly side. But look at how I can use these terms. My laser pointer is over the pelvic bone, and when I move it this way, I'm going in a cranial direction. I can be way back there and use the term cranial. If I'm here with my laser pointer and I want to go up like that, I could say I'm moving in a dorsal direction. Dorsal direction. Now I'm moving in a ventral direction. Okay, continuing with some more terms, you can see the diagram is labeled thoracic cavity. And I can also call that area the thorax. The abdominal cavity can also be called the abdomen. I might lose it there, so I'll do that right there. Abdomen. And the border between the two, let me get my little red pointer here. Get it going. It's a little slow right now. Anyway, that line represents the diaphragm. And that's a skeletal muscle that separates the thorax, separates the thorax from the abdominal cavity, and it's the main inspiratory muscle in most mammals. When it contracts, it actually heads towards the caudal direction. I'm going to try try to draw a little arrow in here. And when it contracts, it makes the thorax bigger, causing more of a negative pressure than it already is in there. And that helps draw in air. It helps return blood to the heart as well. So my arrows are pointing what happens when the diaphragm contracts, makes the thoracic cavity larger. Okay, a couple other terms. Uh, the heart, I'm going to put it right up here, and the lungs are the two structures, and I guess there's a pair of lungs, so maybe you could say three structures, that are located in the thorax. So where my laser pointer is, you would find the heart, and you would find a pair of lungs. And that's the main organs in the thorax, and there's really nothing else there. 